select the matrix, the meters, the measuring instrument of because every industry has a different product or organizations have different service. So these are the factors that affect measurement. And on the basis of measurement, we have to control. We'll be studying it in a little more detail in the coming uh, slides. And let's see. Viewers, as you know that Sir just said that there are different types of control systems. There are three types of control systems, input, conversion process, outputs. When we talk about inputs, it's basically feed forward control which anticipates the problems. In the conversion process, there are concrete control which manages problems as they occur. And as outputs, we have feedback control which manage problems after they occur. Sir, please elaborate us. This is self-explanatory because taking uh, business simply, it can be divided into three parts. There are inputs to a system and uh, there are processes through which the product or the service goes and is produced. And when it has been produced, it goes to market or it goes to customers of that service. So these three are, we can say, inputs and uh, conversion processes and outputs. Now, as you know, inputs are whatever we input in the system. And these relate to uh, the processes and therefore we can say that this is feed forward. At the time of input, we have to control the input so that problems do not arise in the process. Do we have the right sort of materials? Do we have the right sort of technology? Mm -hmm. And uh, can we, through this control, anticipate the problems and resolve them before they occur? So this is feed forward control. Now, when things are being processed, that is concurrent control. You have to watch the process and you have to take note of any deviations or any variances. There are any variances in the process. Sometimes you have to stop the process mm -hmm. and redo things. Mm -hmm. So this is concurrent control. Yes. Now, when it has been produced and the product is now in the warehouse or going to distributors or through distributors going to customers, mm -hmm. then we receive complaints and then we know that there have been certain problems. problems. So this is feedback, feedback coming from the market and we can control or we can revisit our processes and inputs through this system of feedback coming from the markets. There is feed forward then, which is used in the input stage of the process. Managers anticipate problems before they arise. Managers can give rigid specifications to suppliers to avoid quality. Concurrent is basically, which, is, which gives immediate feedback on how inputs are converted into outputs allows managers to correct problem as they arise. Managers can see that a machine is becoming out of alignment and then fix it. Whereas feedback provides after the fact information where managers can use it in the future. Customer reaction to products are used to take corrective action in the future. So what do we have ahead? Now this is what I was already explaining that for our facility, we can uh, have uh, the control system divided into three parts. And this also means that we can have the monitoring of the three parts separately. For example, monitoring the inputs, monitoring the processes in concurrent control and monitoring 
the markets and the feedback from the market. Sir, I have a question here. Are there separate standard of measurements for time, cost and performance? Control process steps are to be separate for these phases because they belong to different uh, uh, phases of the business or stages of business. For example, when we are talking of uh, inputs, we have to see what are our inputs and uh, what standards we have set for the inputs. So they have their metrics which are separate. Similarly, when we are talking of uh, processes or concurrent control, it means that we have to control the process, process of manufacturing or process of providing service to the customers. Now, here we are using machines or technologies or skills in services. Now, obviously, they have different measures, different standards, and we have to have metrics for the processes separate. Similarly, when we talk of markets or feedback from markets or the complaints from uh, the users of materials and services, mm -hmm. we receive these in a bit different way mm -hmm. and uh, we have to classify these, that what sort of complaints are these mm -hmm. and uh, about what and what are the major components of these complaints? So the, sometimes we have complaint analysis cells. Uh, so this is uh, uh, about performance and quality. And performance and quality, as I earlier said, are difficult to measure, but uh, new methodologies have been developed by total quality management people and uh, through computers also that we can make uh, elaborate indexes and we can measure performance and quality against these. So these are the standards which are for performance and quality. And again, they are separate from the metrics and standards of concurrent control and separate from standards uh, and metrics of feed forward, sorry. We can see it in a little more detail in the coming slides. The control process whereas is establish standards and goals or targets against which performance is to be evaluated. Standards must be consistent with strategy. For a low cost strategy, standards should focus closely on cost. Managers at each level need to set their own standards. Number two is that measure actual performance, that is managers can measure outputs resulting from workers' behavior or they can measure the behaviors themselves. Furthermore, the more non-routine the task, the harder it is to measure it. Managers then measure the behavior, come to work on time, not the output. The control process further, if we proceed, compares actual performance against chosen standards. Managers must decide if performance actually deviates. Often several problems combine creating low performance. Then we evaluate result and take corrective action. Perhaps the standards have not been set too high. We, we doubt it. Then workers may need additional training or equipment. And then this step is often hard since the environment is constantly changing. Now this is interesting because a factor that has been mentioned here is the measurement of workers' behavior. Now, the process of monitoring and control is a, a very wide process. And actually, we do not measure only the production or the service by input control and process control and uh, uh, output control. Mm -hmm. We actually have to manage the human resource also yes. and uh, for that we have to manage and control the human resource and we have to see the workers' behavior mm -hmm. and for that we also have to set standards for workers' behavior. Now, all business 
as you know, is run for profit making. Mm -hmm. Mostly the managers concentrate on financial inputs and their control. Let us see what are these. As the expert has said, the input control systems are financial controls and are objective and allow comparison to other firms. Profit ratios, which measures how efficiently managers convert resources into profits. Return on investment, also known as ROI, is the most common. Liquidity ratios measure how well managers protect resources to meet short-term debt. Current and quick ratios. Now, leverage ratios show how much debt is used to finance certain operations. Debt to asset and times convert ratios. Activity ratios were as measures how managers create value from assets. Inventory turnover, days, sales, outstanding. Now from here you can guess that uh, how big a subject it is and how we have to have measures and standards for various aspects of business. For example, in financial controls, we have to uh, study all sorts of ratios and they are for the purpose of financial controls. Mm -hmm. We measure how much of debt we have used, how much profit we have generated from the current resources mm -hmm. and from uh, the assets and whether there has been any creation of new assets what is the ratio of uh, current uh, assets with current liabilities, whether we are able to pay our debts immediately, which is uh, uh, studied through liquidity ratio. So in uh, the subject of accounting, you will be studying the details of all these ratios, but at least it gives you an idea that how elaborate the financial controls are, which are just a part of the whole control system. With this, we come to the end of today's episode. But before we bid goodbye, I would like the expert to review what we studied today in organization culture and control. Sir, please. Here we are. Today's main points are organizational culture, determinants of organizational culture, dimensions of organizational culture, monitoring and control, control systems, types of control, control process, the goal setting process, organizational control system, input control system, output control system. Thank you so much viewers for watching today's episode and thank you the expert for enlightening us on organizational culture and control. We will see you in the next episode with some new information. Allah Hafiz. Thank you.